But now I always stress to people how important it is to capture the moments within a game apart from the actual game itself. Hey everybody, Juan back here today with a brand new video and as always a pleasure to be sitting down with you guys to talk about more sports creative content. It has been a little bit of time since my last video on the channel. I have to apologize. It is a busy time of the year right now, but at the same time, I just want to take the moment to thank you guys for supporting this channel and for everyone who's a new subscriber because we've hit a massive jump in that number. Even though I haven't posted in a little over a month, we are nearly at 500 subscribers and one of my videos hit 1K for the first time. So to those who have supported the channel despite my absence and in the recent weeks, thank you so much. It does not go unnoticed and it is very much appreciated. And for those who are new here, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. If you guys are interested at all in sports content creation, then this is the place to be. And we're nearly at 500 subs, like I said, which was my next biggest milestone to hit. So please consider hitting that button down below. Today, I just wanted to create a quick video to discuss four things I wish I knew when I started out as a sports content creator. These are just a few things I wish I knew at the beginning or at the start of my career, because now they've just become a necessary part of my creative workflow. Hopefully these are tips that you guys can take and implement right now in your sports content creation workflows and make leaps and bounds in the content you're currently making. To kick it off, tip number one is to shoot from a variety of angles. I think one bad habit that videographers get into, especially in sports, is just finding one spot where you like the look and you like the shots straight at the camera and you just plant yourself there for the entire game or event. This was definitely something I struggled with and did early on in my career because I thought finding the best spot on the court or the field was gonna yield me the best results no matter what. However, when it came to projects like post-game recaps or anything along those lines, it was really hard to find additional coverage apart from the one spot that I decided to set at all game, and I really struggled in the editing process. Coverage is one of the most important concepts you need to understand as a sports content creator because when you're shooting a game, the more coverage from several different looks and angles means you'll have a lot more options when it comes to post-production. One thing I always do now when I'm shooting sports no matter what, I'm either changing up the angle, the position, or my elevation on the field or the court of play that I'm shooting at to give myself that additional coverage. For example, I might start the game on the sidelines, but then I might float around for a bit, head to either end of the court here or there, the home or the away, depending on what I'm trying to capture, just to give myself more options. Other things you can do, you can go into the bleachers. That one might give you more elevation if they're raised, but also it gives you depth if you're shooting amongst the crowd. One of my favorite places to mix up my angles is to go by a team bench if you have the access to. That way, you'll have another unique angle to capture the action, but also be right up and close when the team celebrates a big play. The main thing here is that having additional coverage gives you a better and more interesting end result in my opinion. The main thing that this coverage gets you will be a bit of a more interesting and dynamic edit, in my opinion. When you have a variety of angles, it'll give you way more opportunity to cut between different looks. And sometimes if you're lucky, you're able to cut something that looks like a multi-camera sequence if it's a very similar play from a different angle. My whole point with this is the more coverage you have, the more dynamic your edit can be, and the more variety and the more interesting your final product will be for your viewer. Tip number two, capturing emotions. Now everyone loves capturing the highlight reel dunk or that highly real hit or goal, but what about what happens after? I used to think that sports videography was all about what happened on on the field, between the players, during the play, no matter what, and I really didn't pay much attention to what happened between whistles before or after the game. But now, I always stress to people how important it is to capture the moments within a game apart from the actual game itself. Whether it's pre-game emotions of the hype leading up to a big game, or in between whistles when teammates are talking amongst each other and there might be some chirping going on, or most importantly, when there's a big celebration after a goal or a basket or whatever in your sport you're shooting, once there's a big celebration, those are some of the most important pieces to capture, especially when you wanna convey emotion to your audience. The ability to add emotions within your edit will just make it easier for the audience to embed itself within your video, but also relate to the people and the athletes that you're capturing. At the same time, I also wanna tell you guys, don't be afraid to capture difficult emotions. Even if your team loses a game or something happens that might not be beneficial to the team, try to capture some of the more difficult emotions like frustration, anger, or even sadness. These moments of frustration and negative emotions can sometimes be just as powerful, if not more, than the positive ones you'll usually want to capture. The reason for this is because you never know when you're gonna to have to build a motivational style edit or something that showcases a team's resiliency when coming from behind or anything along those lines. This is just my opinion, but capturing and including those little emotions, whether good or bad, in your final video can be the difference between a very good piece of content and an excellent piece of content. Ultimately, in my opinion, capturing and including emotional moments like this in your final edit 
can really make the difference between having a good piece of content and a great piece of content, and it'll allow you to create a better story from that. Tip number three, and this may be a controversial one, but don't be afraid to overshoot. This kind of goes hand in hand with the previous tip because it does have a lot to do with capturing those emotions and moments. A bad habit I personally got into early in my creative career as a videographer was to hit the record button as soon as the action was over. Whenever the dunk was finished or the goal was scored, I would immediately hit the record button and that was that. But then I started to realize what I was missing out on. Those celebrations, those emotions, those moments that I keep mentioning are some of the most important parts in sports content. And when I hit record early, there was no way I was going to capture them. I know there will be a lot of people who will tell you not to overshoot and just to save yourself the time when you're editing, but I think when it comes to capturing sports, it is very different than other things you might be shooting when it comes to videography. Moments, emotions, celebrations come at the blink of an eye, and if you aren't recording, you're gonna miss them, and often there's no way you can really replicate them organically. I can't tell you the number of times early on in my career I would hit the record button early and someone would celebrate right in front of me, but I wasn't recording and I would be kicking myself down the road because I would have thought, damn, that would have been a great moment to end this video on or a great moment to put in the middle of my video to keep my audience hyped. Being patient is so important when it comes to this tip in particular. Do not be afraid to hold off on hitting the record button as soon as the action is done. Look for what's happening in between whistles and don't be afraid to keep it rolling. If you just take a second to pause, look around through your camera and see what you can look out in the field between the players, the coaches, anything, even the fans, you might be surprised that you might capture a small little gem that could very well end up being one of your best shots from that game. Some of my favorite highlights have come from moments where I just said, you know what, I'm gonna keep recording. So please don't be afraid of overshooting. You're gonna get some really good moments if you just take the time to wait. Tip number four, back up everything. This is actually something I did since the start of my videography career, and it's probably been the one most important tip that anybody has ever given me. I vividly remember my first class at Ryerson for Sport Media, our professor was telling us that the most important thing when working with digital media was, and I quote, to back your shit up. You literally will never expect or know when a hard drive is about to corrupt, crash on you, fall, you might lose it, you know, your cards might be corrupted, you never know what could happen, and at the end of the day, that's out of your hands. You can't do anything about it once that data is gone. My biggest piece of advice to you guys with this one is, as soon as you're done shooting a game, as soon as you're done shooting anything, and you're positive, you don't need to capture anything else, go right to your computer and back up your files, not once, not twice, but at least three separate times. Personally, I like to copy my files on two separate physical hard drives and a third copy of my files to a cloud service like Dropbox or Google Drive. Trust me guys, this will save you so much frustration and heartbreak down the road because if your hard drive crashes or your files corrupt, you have the peace of mind at knowing that you have a backup somewhere ready to go. A side tip to you guys when you're editing kind of similar along these lines, make sure you are always saving your projects while you're working on them. You never know when Premiere or Final Cut Pro or whatever program you choose to edit on might crash on you and your saves might be gone. As well, also making copies of every you know couple days or after every project session you have editing, make a copy of your file and store it somewhere else. You never know when it could come in handy. Bottom line, back up everything. It'll save your life down the road. To conclude, these are all things I wish I knew when I started off, but now I'm super glad I have them in my back pocket and they're things I do on a regular basis, just instinctively. I hope these are tips that you guys can take and apply in your own sports content creation because these are all things I wish I knew earlier on down the road and hopefully knowing them early will help you guys improve significantly as you grow as a creator. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. If you guys have any tips, feel free to put them down in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. And if you guys have any questions for me or have any suggestions for what you guys wanna see on the channel, feel free to put them down below. I would love to engage with you guys and see what you guys are thinking. If you guys haven't yet, make sure to follow me on Instagram at 77jmorales. I'm always active on there. You'll see me post my work very frequently. And if you guys have ever any questions, feel free to shoot me a DM. I'm more than happy to try to help you guys out. And that does it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.